right? You got, you get, you solve a problem for client A, problem A, and you charge them monies. And then you get another client and they're like, can you solve this problem for me? And you're like, yeah, I can. And I'm going to charge a bit more monies. And then you get client C and you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to charge a bit more monies. And then maybe you need some help, right? So you bring this human on to serve client B, but then you don't want to put them on the payroll because they cost more money. So you put them on the bench. And then when you try and bring them back, they're like, bah, bah, I got another job. I got another contract. And then you reach this kind of glass ceiling of scale where all your time is filled up. You don't know who you're marketing to. You don't know who you're selling to because you can do lots of different things for lots of people, right? So let's switch the story to two different consultants. The tale of two consultants, right? And at the end of the day, consultants and coaches love to solve problems. So let's do a double-sided graph, you know. James is feeling ambitious today with his uh, creativity and drawing. And both consultants grow to 100, 40 hours a week and 100K. And they're capped out, right? And they're capped out with all that custom work, which is literally just a patchwork of different things. And they fill up the container. number one and number two. So they, th they look around and go, I'm maxed out. I have reached my income cap with selling labor. This seems a bit silly. I'm going to look around for different options. I've reached my time cap. I'm kind of burnt out by solving the same problems over and over again. Um, I'm going to look around for solutions. And they look for courses, which is a very common like, hey, we've got lots of IP here and how do we do it? And remember that consultants love to solve problems. So consultant one builds a course for $1,000 and he uses that. Uh, let's do gender neutral. He uses that to get new clients into his custom work, yeah. right? So he then raises, he still does custom work because he just loves solving problems. And that's perfectly fine. There's no judgment with that. He's got a patchwork but he raises it up while not working more time because he moves the graph up because the course is used as leverage and a filter to get people into the custom work. It solves one problem for one particular person in the market, filters people through and leverages their IP to solve a problem to get them more custom work. The income goes up while the hours spent delivering go down. So the effective hourly rate of the consultant goes up. Consultant two starts out on the same path, but consultant two does something different with their thousand dollar course, right? They're like, you know what? I love, I love my clients and I love solving problems, but what I really, really want to do is just scale to the moon. So then consultant two uses their front end course for a thousand dollars and they solve that one problem and then they build a $5,000 program, you know, more hands on, more done with you, more customization, maybe a bit of services and a bit of software thrown in. And they use the thousand dollars, you know, for every one, every 10 customers they get in there, two of them come into there. And then they're getting great results and they're like, Hey, I want to work with people on the back end. I want to get, you know, a 30k a year, I want to do a recurring revenue offer and constantly serve my clients. So they use it, they replace all their custom work. And there is no real ceiling on either the time or the money, but the time will go down. And the money will go up because there is more leverage because the, the, the effective hourly rate is increasing. So this is the tale of two people. And this is why I'm a ma massively allergic to cookie cutter business models because consultant one wants to solve problems, right? Consultant two wants to unpack IP and scale to the moon. 
it's not my job to judge it and it's probably not yours either. <laughs> but fundamentally, they both started with a thousand dollar course to get leverage because there's this there's this idea that courses um, and it's it's part of marketing courses are just there to make money and courses can make money. They're very effective money making tools because they generate leverage, but they can be used properly to do a lot more things. And this is where, you know, this is a typical online consulting or coaching business. But if you do custom services, like I've helped, you know, tech companies do it, I've helped SaaS companies do it, add information products to the front end of their business to generate more cash flow, liquidate their marketing, and drive more custom work. Especially in the like e commerce space or the agency space, there is so much opportunity there to use a course to drive more custom work. And many, in many cases, the, the marketing is very binary launch a course to make more money. But it's such a simplistic view of doing it, and it only appeals to a certain number of people who just want to make money. And often those people, um, I'll stop there. Um, but the I want to show you that there are multiple ways to deploy IP in the form of online programs and courses. And not enough people are talking about option one here because they're like, everybody's saying, build a course to make more money or build a course to you know sell online. But there are lots and lots of ways to deploy this IP to actually drive other business results that are more conducive with the place that the business is. And if you work with anybody in business coaching or consulting who helps you do these kind of things, make sure that you are clear about your business goals, your unfair advantages, the needs of your market, rather than blindly going down the track of courses are there to make more money. Because that may well kill the golden goose that you've already got on the other side. And the answer is, you know, often, what is the best way to use a course in your business? It depends on what your goals are for the business, what your unfair advantage is, what the marketplace, what the landscape is, and the acceptable. Some markets will just not buy courses. Many markets are underserved by billions of dollars because they will definitely buy courses, um, in my definition of what the way they're delivered, and they are a gigantic opportunity to drive more revenue for more custom work. Just as much as they are a, a, a gigantic opportunity to drive more revenue to actually dr drive more productized services and actually have a scale business. Custom work is very, very, very difficult to scale. It requires additional labor, it requires additional overhead, and it will always be the hardest route to scale without productizing every single business, but that's not always possible. So I wanted to show you different ways to think about online courses because I only see one narrative in the marketplace that courses are just there to make money. Um, they're very, very effective because they're highly, highly profitable and they have gigantic margins, so they tick a lot of boxes. But you have to be very lucid about how you use them, how you deploy them in your business, and it comes down to your goals, your unfair advantage, and, and ultimately the market conditions that you operate in and the conduciveness of people to buy that. Um, I'm not going to get into what my definition of a course is because it's very nuanced. Um, it's not just sending people a load of videos and saying log in and if you don't get results, it's your fault. Um, it's much more nuanced in the delivery of that. So I hope that helps. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people get stuck in the I'm making a course to make money kind of thing and not be able to get out of it because they can't work out how to apply that to the business. They're very, very effective ways to both scale a business with leverage and you know build a multiple product stack, but they're also very, very effective ways to sell custom or one-on-one -on -one or more intimate work that needs more variability and needs more labor and time to do it. Um, both work. One might be better for you. Um, and I'd say you should probably pick that one.